To start our podcast, I'd like to review our conceptual model. Yogurt is our central focus, creating a probiotic rich yogurt using bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, and streptococcus species is the main goal, while also being conscientious of the availability of ingredients for those patients of the downtown clinic. We have two tracks for both normal methods of making yogurt, using the powdered milk and fat-free milk, along with the yogurt starter, and an additional track with only powdered milk and the starter. With the development of the yogurt, the gut microbiome of type 2 diabetics at the DTC will be impacted positively. On the left you can see one a day true biotics. This is the probiotic that is offered at the downtown clinic. It is usually only offered to patients with antibiotics and is very rarely offered to patients who have type 2 diabetes. This picture shows the ingredients that we use to make our yogurt. At the top you can see the natron yogurt starter, which was the initial starter that we were using that contains lactobacillus bulgaricus and streptococcus thermophilus. In the middle you can see the yogurt may starter, which we switched to, that contains lactobacillus bulgaricus, lactobacillus acidophilus, and streptococcus thermophilus. Behind that you can see mountain high yogurt in the plain flavor, which we've also begun using to try and inoculate yogurt, and that contains lactobacillus acidophilus Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaricus. On the right, you can see the probiotics that we've been using. The probiotic on the far right is from Nature's Healthy Choice, and the probiotic is containing Bifidobacterium lactis, which is one of the isolates that we've been looking for. In the middle, you can see Nature Made Acidophilus, which is the Lactobacillus acidophilus probiotic that we've been using. And to the left, you can see Lactobacillus rhamnosus, which is a Swanson probiotic that we've been using as well. This is an extremely quick video showing the procedure that we've been using this semester to make our yogurt. In this video, it shows us using dry milk and a starter culture that contains lactobacillus acidophilus, lactobacillus bulgaricus, and streptococcus thermophilus. Using dry milk has been one of the biggest challenges that we've encountered throughout this semester. The use of dry milk has been one of our goals because it's going to be able to make our yogurt more accessible to patients at the downtown clinic if we can successfully use it. We began the semester by using dry milk as well as skim milk, but after a run-in with some spoiled skim milk, we decided to immediately switch to using just dry milk, which was our goal in the end. We're still working on how much dry milk we need to add to produce a consistency that we were looking for in our yogurt. Shown here is an image of our yogurt after incubation. At the beginning of our project, we were trying to decide how long to incubate the yogurt. The commercial starter suggested 8 hours, while lab manual suggested 24. In comparison, the 24-hour incubated yogurt had a better consistency, so 24 hours is what we now currently incubate our yogurt at. Also seen on the containers are the pH of the two. In the next image, you can see the yogurt after it has been dried out. We place the yogurt in an incubator at 55 degrees Celsius for 72 hours in order to measure the moisture content that was within the yogurt. The yogurt that was made with partially skim milk and partially powdered milk took longer to dry out as compared to the yogurt that's made with powdered milk only. Throughout our experiments, we have performed several gram stains. Gram staining is an important microbiological method used to differentiate bacterial species. These species differ by their chemical and physical properties of their cell walls. There's gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells. Gram-positive bacteria have a thick layer of peptidoglycan, and they appear purple under the microscope. And gram-negative cells have a thinner layer of peptidoglycan, and they appear pink. Here we can see Caleb doing a gram stain. 
First, he's adding water to a microscope slide, and then he will select an isolated colony and add it to the slide. Once the slide has dried completely, he will heat fix the slide, and then he will add crystal violet, iodine, ethanol, and safranin, and that will create the gram stain. In addition to using the gram stain to view the bacteria under the microscope, we also use a dark microscope to view the bacteria alive using a wet mount. An important part of our research is performing titrations, which is an important process that dilutes the original starting material to where we can count how many bacteria are present in our yogurt. Here is me doing titrations. Hello all, this is Caleb just talking about isolation here. Uh, it's crucial that we you know, isolate our bacteria, our desired bacteria, from our initial sources. And what we're doing is isolating them so that we can later um, grow them inside, uh, inside milk. And then one, we're going to use that milk to create our yogurt. And that's how we're going to get our desired uh, concentrations. So uh, initially we had to isolate our bacteria, which proved to, which proved to be pretty tricky. Um, especially when it kept mess messing up the plates. Uh, here in this picture we see our MRS times 1 and MRS times 2. Um, times 2 means we had double the dye messed up. Uh, we ended up throwing out those plates. Uh, the MRS, uh, this is with uh, bromophenol blue. And so what we see is, uh, like with lactobacillus rhamnosus, is we see uh, the media turning uh, green. Um, and that also happens with the bifida bacteria. So this, this helps us uh, differentiate the bacteria. Uh, there's another MRS times 2 plate. Um, as you can see, it's, it's not as good growth. Uh, we don't have a comparison plate in this picture, but there's definitely not as well, or growth um, is not as good as the MRS times 1. Uh, there's just a S thermophilus restreak. Um, we need to uh, get our, our isolates, uh, make sure those are our isolates by doing uh, um, gram stains as well as uh, wet mounts. Because the gram stain, you won't see the, uh, the movement of the bacteria. Um, we're also creating, creating uh, TSB broth that's uh, inoculated with S. thermophilus as well as uh, frozen bifidobacteria. Um, I don't know what happened, but we kept messing this up. Um, you know, autoclaving is, is uh, putting the, the media at a really high temperature to kill off all the bacteria. And so this bifido medium, um, we kept having a problem with contamination. So this growth in the medium is uh, it's inside the medium. It's not like on the plate where it should be. Um, and so that's how we knew that our plates were contaminated. We actually did this twice. So somewhere along the way between um, the autoclaving procedure and pouring the actual plates is where we kept messing up. We have uh, MRS, MRS times 2, TSA, uh, just growing the yogurt starter, um, <laughs> which, which proved to be difficult for isolation of Lactobacillus bulgaricus. Um, and John actually grew these plates, uh, not these plates, but he grew our, uh, our starter and, and what was weird at the beginning is we kept finding these spores and we were like, what is going on? We thought it was just, you know, uh, us messing up the yogurt procedure, but it turned out that there's the spore former um, contaminant in this, in this starter, which is why we later uh, move on to a different starter and, you know, trying to figure out which starter works best. Uh, here we have just the different media that John used to try to get Lactobacillus bulgaricus. This is uh, currently in the works. Um, we just inoculated TSB. Um, with Lactobacillus bulgaricus because we're having a hard time getting that bacteria by itself. Um, but we put, the t we put it in some TSB, didn't show growth. Uh, today we actually, um, which is Tuesday, we, um, we ended up putting it into TSB which we modified to 4.8 pH which is ideal for Lactobacillus growth. Alright, so moving on to um, the different media that we've, this is kind of like the evolution of our medium. Um, here we have on the left bifido auger. Uh, the top one's bifido isolation. That's, you know, we, we thought it was bifido, but it turns out that our bifido auger didn't do such a good job with uh, isolating bifido. Um, as you can see in that second one, where you have a lot of growth. Uh, so you see the bifido at the top. Um, oh, excuse me, S. thermophilus at the top, bifido at the bottom. So there's heavy S. thermophilus growth. So that bottom plate on the far left is, is the new bifido medium, which we uh, put 
it added propionic acid and uh, a, 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 blue, a blue dye to it. Um, and that's to selective, select and differentiate the bacteria. Um, and so we're, we're kind of troubleshooting with that and, and seeing if that works really well. I'm hoping it does. We actually have a plate in the, uh, in the incubator right now, and hopefully we have good results from that. Um, in the middle, we can see MRS BPP. Uh, you'll see at the top, we've we basically looked at different temperatures for MRS BPP. Um, at the bottom, you can see that temperature that's, it was roughly 35.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, we see good isolation of lactobacillus rhamnosus, which will be great in, uh, in our future, um, future parts of the project. Um, now these, these far two columns, we have S. thermophilus auger. And this S. thermophilus auger, we thought, the literature said, you know, S. thermophilus auger is fantastic for isolation and enumeration of S. thermophilus. We're like, great, awesome. And uh, as you can see from those top two plates, we have lots of other growth. So we're like, what is going on? So we hit the literature again, and turns out, turns out that the Sigma Aldrich recipe that we were using was the wrong recipe. And so the paper was actually using a different one with a chromocrystal, uh, or excuse me, bromocrystal purple uh, dye in it. And you can see that we have pretty good growth of S. thermophilus. Um, you can see the four purple plates there. Um, that's just uh, testing out different temperatures. Um, you can't really see it really well in this picture, but we also have really great growth of rhamnosus, which isn't great, but if it's just thermophilus and rhamnosus growth, then we'll be able to tell the two apart or, uh, you know, in the, our future, future parts of the project, um, when we're adding the variables one by one, um, you know, this won't even be a problem because we'll just have S. thermophilus until we uh, add that rhamnosus to it. All right, so in conclusion, we've learned so much from this project, um, whether that's, you know, bacterial isolation and enumeration, titrations, um, working with different media, producing our different uh, media, um, and it's been a fantastic experience, um, but we've learned how hard it is that, to make bacteria and to enumerate those bacteria, um, you know, learning how bacteria work together, pH changes, um, so it's, it's been an adventure, but it's been a, a really great adventure, and uh, we're, we're just glad to be a part of this project. Thank you.